cut it up a few times, though. <laughs> Celebration. Let's give God the glory on this morning for a soul being dedicated to God and his kingdom. The word of God says in Romans 6, 3, and 4, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Let us prepare our hearts through prayer for this baptism service. Heavenly Father, we come before your presence thanking you, God, for leading, God, this soul, your son, God, to be baptized into Jesus Christ, baptized into newness of life. Bless, God, this baptism service. Bless the soul, God, that is being renewed in you. May you get the glory from it all. In Jesus' name, amen. And we welcome our baptism candidate into the water, Brother Anthony Alexander.
because of your faith and belief in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by the authority invested in me, I baptize you, my brother Anthony Alexander, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah! Glory to God for this new beginning in the name of Jesus. We praise God for his new beginning. Let's welcome to the kingdom of God, Brother Anthony Alexander. The word of God says in Galatians 3 and 27, as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. We thank God that we who are baptized and believe in God, we put on the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our shield and our buckler. He is our strength and our song. And we give God the glory on today for this baptism on the church anniversary. Let us close out again with a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you. We bless you. We give you the honor and the glory. Guide and direct the steps of Brother Anthony Alexander. God, from now through eternity, in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God, new hope.
announcements for the week are brought to you happy 74th church anniversary new hope let's celebrate together the church an new hope after our 74th anniversary service there will be dinner in the fellowship hall and following dinner there will be a showing of disney's pixar movie inside out at 3 p.m you and the family are invited to have dinner in a movie and continue the celebration of our 74th anniversary. If you have any questions, contact our youth minister, Minister Breon Scott. New Hope, we are planning another Easter community feed on Saturday, March 23rd from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. at New Hope Missionary Baptist Church. We are looking for volunteers to help during the event at, from 10 a.m. through 4 p.m. If you're interested in volunteering, please sign up on the sign-up sheet in the lobby. If you'd like to donate or you would like to bring a dish, please reach out to Reverend Annette, Sister Selena, or Apostle Duckworth. We'll be conducting a meeting for all those who are interested in volunteering. We are in need of men's clothing, shoes, and toiletries. Please give us a week's notice to plan for your dish that you'll be bringing. We ask you to bring it on the day of the event. Again, New Hope, we look forward to you helping us help feed the community this Easter. If you have any questions, please contact Reverend Annette, Sister Selena, or Apostle Duckworth. New Hope, mark your calendars for our annual Seven Last Words of Christ Good Friday celebration to be held on Friday, March 29th at 6 p.m. 
Preachers will include Reverend Annette Jeffrey, Reverend Lawrence Willis, Reverend Dr. Victoria Carr Ware, Bishop Gwendolyn Phillips Coates, Reverend Dr. Doris Cope, Reverend Dr. Paul Stute, and Reverend Dr. Carrie Anderson, with our pastor, Reverend Dr. Jeffrey Hosting. Let us come together to celebrate our risen, He is risen, new hope. Let us arise and celebrate Jesus Christ our Lord. Join us on Easter Sunday for two services, 6 a.m. sunrise service and 10.45 a.m. worship service at New Hope on Resurrection Sunday, March 31st. All ministers of New Hope are reminded there is an associate ministers meeting this Saturday at 1 p.m. The associate ministers meet every third Saturday at 1 p.m. in the ushers meeting room. If you have any questions, contact our assistant pastor, Reverend Lanisha debard Layden. Good morning and welcome to the New Hope Missionary Baptist Church live stream channel. We invite you to get up and call a friend and tell them that New Hope is on live. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And now our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Robert L. Jeffrey Sr. Everybody clap your hand, come on. Good morning, good morning, good morning, New Hope, and those of you watching and listening. My name is Deacon Isaiah Anderson, Jr., and I will be your worship leader this morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome to New Hope Missionary Baptist Church's 74th church anniversary. Amen? Amen. Amen. Come on, clap, clap. Somebody celebrated a birthday recently, and I know you clap louder than that. Come on, it's a birthday. Amen. Amen. We are going to have a great time in the Lord today. Um, we're going to open up this service with some praise and worship. Come on. Amen. I am on the battlefield. Oh, my Lord. Yeah, yes, I'm on the battlefield. Oh, my Lord. Yeah, and I
again, we welcome you to New Hope's 74th church anniversary. We are going to have a good time. I know for a fact somebody forgot to set their clock. I know for a fact. I know this. Somebody set their clock and still, and still overslept. But God is good. God is good. I set my clocks last night. I said, I'm not playing with nobody. At 11 o'clock, I put everything to 12 o'clock. Went to bed and woke up and said, mm, still missed that hour. You hear me? Let me get to the church house. Amen. We are now going to have invocation in our scripture. Our invocation. Um, Our own Reverend Lanisha Book. To God be the glory, new hope for 74 years. To God be the glory, new hope for this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Let us rejoice and be glad in Him, the one whose blood covers us. Hallelujah, his life gives us new life. His resurrection gives us resurrection power. And we stand today on this special church anniversary, giving God all the glory, honor, adoration, and praise due his name. Let us stand before him as we go into prayer on today. We are praising God for the soul that was baptized on this morning. rejoicing as the angels rejoice in the decision of a soul that has been committed to Christ and the kingdom of God. We thank God that Brother Anthony Alexander is new in Christ on today. He is the cousin to our own Reverend Nate Wilson. Let us pray this morning. Heavenly Father, we stand in your presence. God, we stand with thanksgiving. We stand with praise. We stand, God, with gratitude for all that you've done, for who you are in our lives, in this ministry, in our families, in our community. God, you are the God who has called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. God, you are the God, God, who has resurrected us with new life, new hope, and a new beginning in you. So God, as we come to you on this 74th church anniversary, we pray that your Holy Spirit, God, will be honored and glorified, that your will will be done during this worship experience, God, that we will not leave the way that we came in Jesus' name. God, we pray that your Holy Spirit, God, will minister to us through your word, through your spirit. God, we pray that your spirit will speak to us God, with a fresh word. God, with a word that will give us strength, hope, peace, and joy. In Jesus' name we pray, your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, New Hope. I'm going to be coming from Luke chapter 4, starting at verse 1. Then Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan River, he was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where he was tempted by the devil for 40 days. Jesus ate nothing at all at that time and became very hungry. Then the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become a loaf of bread. But Jesus said, told him, No. The scripture says, People do not live by bread alone. Then the devil took him up and revealed to him all the kingdoms of the world in the moment, in that moment in time. I will give you the glory of these kingdoms and the authority over them, the devil said, because they are mine to give to anyone I please. I will give it all to you if you will worship me. Then Jesus replied, the scriptures say, you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem to the highest point of the temple and said, if you are the son of God, jump off. For the scripture says, 
he will order his angels to protect and guard you. And they will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt a foot or a stone. Oh, no, stone. Luke chapter 4, verse 1 through 11. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers and hearers of his holy word. Amen. We thank you for that. We thank you for that. We are going to continue on in service. Amen. Amen. Oh, I see. oh look out. I'm looking out there. Y'all look good. Look at here. Y'all look good. Pastor, somebody told me one time, I said, you look casket sharp. I said, I'll never wear it again. You hear me? I'll never wear it again. I don't want nobody to bury me in nothing in my closet. You hear me? Nothing. Everything is living. Everything is living. Amen. We're going to have a praise and worship our mass choir this morning. Amen.
Come on, put your hands together. Come on, put your hands together. If you really love the Lord, put your hands together. Put your hands together. Come on.
Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. One more time. Lord, One more time. Said, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Since getting the um, request to do this all week, it's uh, set me back in memory. Good memories. Good memories. Brief history 
church he loved. On September 18, 1949, the Reverend C.E. Williams and Deacon Ivory Luke met to discuss plannings, plans for organizing a church. Nine members, along with Pastor Williams, were the founders as they were sister Alzonia Williams, Deacon Paul Brooks, Brother George Christian, Sister Mary Johnson, Brother Simi, and Sister Elisa LaFall. Deacon Ivory and Sister Asley Luke, Deacon Ben Rhodes were in that meeting. New Hope began worship service on November 13, 1949. The adults who attended the first service became known as charter members. They were Sister Evelyn Christian, Sister Jesse Felder, Brother Luke, Brother Luther, and Sister Melinda Franklin, Brother George and Louise Martin, Brother Foley and Sister Ruby Robinson and Brother William Walker. On July 27, 1958, a groundbreaking service for the new building was held where held where present building stands today on this very site. Construction on the building began September 15, 1958. At the estimate, estimated cost of $80,000, not today. With nothing but faith, unity, willingness, and a determined mind to survive, they resolved to meet, to make this effort a success. They marched into the sanctuary of the new church on June 21st, 1959, and gave praise to the Lord for his goodness. Since purchasing the property at 124 21st Avenue, they also purchased the lot adjoining the south side of the property. After presiding over a meeting evening fellowship service on Sunday, March 24th, 1985, God in his infinite wisdom called Reverend Dr. Williams home to rest. Dr. C.E. Williams led, Dr. C.E. Williams had remained the pastor of New Hope for over 35 years. The church was devastated by the loss of Pastor Williams but knew that God would not leave us alone. In March 1986, Reverend Dr. Robert Lee Jeffrey Sr. was elected the, the church by the church body to fill the pastoral vacancy. In May of 1986, he had begun his leadership role as pastor of New Hope in 73, in these 74 years, New Hope has only had two pastors. What a mighty God we serve. On May 17, 1994, a devastating fire destroyed the building, but not the church. The fire took away from the congregation and community a building they had stood as a beacon of hope and the light for 45 years. On Sunday, January, 20, January 31st, 1999, we returned to our New Hope Church home. For the last 25 years since the construction of our new building, New Hope has been unstoppable in empowering and empowering the community with hope, help, 
hope and help. From clean greens to black dollar day tasks, to black dollar days, to the New Hope Community Development Institute and more. Through it all, we have trusted God, trusted God's purpose and God's plan. That's a brief history on New Hope. The assistant pastor asked me to kind of reflect on what New Hope meant to me over the years. In that time, 1958, if I read it correctly, or 59, on September 15th, 1958, it's when the groundbreaking, I wasn't born, but my grandparents, they were not part of the founding for, uh, founding that service, but from the time I could hear when it came to New Hope, they always spoke of the little white building next door and that these names I mentioned were the names I would hear in the back seat of that old station wagon, the Lukes, the Hendricks, the Williams. My grandmother passed away at 99 years old last year in October. And I would fly back to New York frequently to say hi. Not one time did I ever go back and she not ask about Reverend Jeffrey and New Hope. So that's the history of how New Hope in my life has always been there. I was born in 64. So I know I walked into that old building, but I didn't know it until I came back and worked under the leadership of Reverend Jeffrey in 1988. After you had been here a little while, then started working in the music department with a family member who was here in the 60s as a teenager. So New Hope has always been a part of my DNA. And I have no plans on going anywhere outside of New Hope permanently until God says, go somewhere. Thank you, New Hope, appreciate it. Amen. Let's give one Tony uh, one more round of applause. Amen. Amen. Tony was up here representing for a lot of us. Y'all didn't see the, the font size on his paper. It was large. It was large. It was large. If I pull my phone up on a text right now, you can read it from the back of the pew. You hear me? Large. Do anything except put on glasses. You hear me? I'm going to make it large. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We are now at our uh, announcements. We're going to now have announcements, uh, New Hope announcements, and upcoming events. Amen. Good morning, New Hope. The announcements for the week are brought to you by the New Hope Media team, and they are as follows. New Hope, after our 74th anniversary service, there will be dinner in the Fellowship Hall. And following dinner, there will be a showing of Disney's Pixar movie, Inside Out, at 3 p.m. You and the family are invited to have dinner in a movie and continue the celebration of our 74th anniversary. If you have any questions, contact our youth minister, Minister Breon Scott. New Hope, we are planning another Easter community feed on Saturday, March 23rd from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. 
at New Hope Missionary Baptist Church. We are looking for volunteers to help during the event at, from 10 a.m. through 4 p.m. If you're interested in volunteering, please sign up on the sign-up sheet in the lobby. If you'd like to donate or you would like to bring a dish, please reach out to Reverend Annette, Sister Selena, or Apostle Duckworth. We'll be conducting a meeting for all those who are interested in volunteering. We are in need of men's clothing, shoes, and toiletries. Please give us a week's notice to plan for your dish that you'll be bringing. We ask you to bring it on the day of the event. Again, New Hope, we look forward to you helping us help feed the community this Easter. If you have any questions, please contact Reverend Annette, Sister Selena, or Apostle Duckworth. New Hope, mark your calendars for our annual Seven Last Words of Christ Good Friday celebration to be held on Friday, March 29th at 6 p.m. Preachers will include Reverend Annette Jeffrey, Reverend Lawrence Willis, Reverend Dr. Victoria Carr Ware, Bishop Gwendolyn Phillips Coates, Reverend Dr. Doris Cope, Reverend Dr. Paul Stute, and Reverend Dr. Carrie Anderson, with our pastor, Reverend Dr. Jeffrey Hosting. Let us come together to celebrate our risen Lord. He is risen. New hope. Let us arise and celebrate Jesus Christ our Lord. Join us on Easter Sunday for two services, 6 a.m. sunrise service and 10.45 a.m. worship service at New Hope on Resurrection Sunday, March 31st. All ministers of New Hope are reminded there is an associate ministers meeting this Saturday at 1 p.m. The associate ministers meet every third Saturday at 1 p.m. in the ushers meeting room. If you have any questions, contact our assistant pastor, Reverend Lanisha DeBarge-Lady. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you for those announcements. We are now going to, uh, I'm gonna bring up our own Dr. Robert L. Jeffrey Sr. Amen, for our tithes and offerings. Uh, so thank you, huh? Let's give Isaiah a hand. Um, there is a play being shown. It's sold out today, so you can't buy tickets. I went twice. Um, it is tremendous. I mean, you guys are doing a great thing at, the, at um, Acts on Stage. Uh, he, he, it belongs to him and it belongs to him, acts on the stage. It is an African-American, African-American theater. And I think you've, uh, come, tell, come say a little bit about acts on stage, because <laughs> you know, I, I, I have been blown away this week. I went Sunday, I was tired, but he gave me tickets. And when somebody gives you something, you have to respect that. <laughs> So I was tired, I, you know, I said, I told my wife, I don't really want to go, but I'm going because he gave me the tickets. And I tell you, it, it, was, it was just, it, it was just outstanding. The actors are outstanding, the play is outstanding, and it's being supported by the whole community, not just black folk. It's just as many white folk there last night as black folk. I mean, it's being supported by the entire community. It's, a, it's one of the up and coming theaters in Seattle, but one of the up and coming places for people to go who like theater, and uh, I love theater, and I'm gonna be putting it on my calendar. I'm gonna be a sponsor. I told him I was gonna be a sponsor. And I invite each of you to be, uh, to think about being a sponsor. It uh, trains, well, let him talk about it. I'm not gonna... <laughs> Amen, thank you, Pastor. Acts on Stage Theater is owned and operated by uh, Michelle Lang Raymond and myself. I am the artistic director, and I direct it. Uh, all of our productions thus far, she is the executive director. We opened in 2020 during the pandemic and uh, we had to do some adjusting, but God has saw through to, lot, to allow us to, to continue moving forward. And so we've done some tremendous work. We work with uh, adults, community, youth, 
Uh, and the play that we're doing right now is called King X, The Meeting. And so it's the what would have been a conversation between Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. Uh, and it's an awesome, awesome story. Uh, I thank you, Pastor. He came twice. Um, we sold out. Um, so if you want tickets, listen, it's sold out. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> Um, but please keep uh, Acts on stage on your calendar for any special events, uh, anything that you want to, going on in the community. It is literally the only black-owned theater building, black-owned theater building, right? black-owned theater building. Um, and so we, we love what we do. Um, but there were some pioneers, Kabibi, some pioneers that set forth that allowed us to do what we do. So we're standing on some, some, some big, broad shoulders, and we thank you. So Kabibi right here is a, is a legend in this place. A legend. Um, but yeah, continue to support Acts on Stage. Thank you. Pat. Wow, that doesn't tell half the story. Um, but um, we're just proud of you, Isaiah. We're proud of uh, the work you're doing. I mean, it's just amazing. And the acting is just superb. I mean, the, the actors, <laughs> I was blown away. And I, had, I saw it once on Sunday, and I was affected. And then I went back. I said, well, I already know what's going to happen. But I was still blown away even more. So the acting is just outstanding. And these are young black actors, young black actors who are getting their start at Acts on Stage. It's amazing what's going on over there. And I invite each of you to be a part of it. New Hope, we are proud of, proud of you. All right, we're, now we're down to the real business of the uh, black American church, right? taking up an offering. <laughs> Amen. So we invite each of you to give this morning, give your tithe, as, all, as well as this is church anniversary. We ask you to give your anniversary offering, 365. We, um, so we ask you to give that this morning. I have uh, Reverend Lanisha's offering and uh, I have my offering. And uh, we ask you to give that this morning as we give as unto the Lord. God has been good. Has, how many of you know that the Lord has been good to you? I am uh, just uh, extremely blessed this weekend. I have my dear friend, um, Dr. Pitts, here with me. Um, Dr. Pitts and I met in the 60s, long time ago. We worked together at the YMCA. Uh, we're like oil, we were like oil and water. Dr. Pitts was... <laughs> Dr. Pitts has always been a conscientious, hard, <laughs> dutiful worker. And uh, our job was to go out into the streets of Seattle and to, uh, I'm not, no, Richmond, Richmond, Virginia, go out into the streets on the playgrounds and talk to the people on the playgrounds. And uh, he did his job. I went out on the streets of Seattle, but. <laughs> I mean, of Richmond, but, uh, but we, uh, we had a great time and hadn't seen him since that year. He left and went to Ann Hover Newton and not stayed at Virginia Union. It's been a great, amazing reunion. God bless you. Good to see you. Good to have you here. So let's give this morning, New Hope. Let's give, let's give, let's give, let's give in Jesus' name. Amen. Choir.
all stand. Reverend Nate. Reverend Nate. If you could bow your heads and close your eyes. Father God, thank you for giving us this opportunity to give to you, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for what you're doing in our lives. Father God, bless the ones who wanted to give and couldn't give and bless the ones who did give, Father God. And we ask you to accept these gifts in your Jesus' name, in your beloved son, Jesus' name, in the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen. I, before I introduce the preacher, I'm going to ask the choir for a selection and then I'm going to introduce and we'll have another one.
Praise God. How many of you have a testimony this morning? How many of you have a testimony this morning? Praise the Lord. Our guest is the Reverend Dr. Tyrone Pitts. As I've just said earlier, a dear, dear friend of mine. He's the General Secretary Emeritus and Ecumenical Officer of the Progressive National Baptist Convention of America, Inc. Dr. Pitts is also the Executive Director of the Progressive National Baptist Convention Community Development Corporation, Inc., which recently completed the construction of Providence Place, a 93-unit moderate income housing community on the headquarters campus of the Progressive National Baptist Convention in Washington, D.C. Dr. Pris Dr. Pitts is president and CEO of Bridges International LLC, a consultant service for peace and justice. His mission is to work with both religious and secular organizations, assisting them in building bridges of reconciliation in international development and global education struggles. Dr. Pitts is a member of the board of directors of Capital Caring Health, a nonprofit that provides hospice care for persons in Washington, D.C., Virginia, Maryland areas. Recently served as co-chair of the Coalition to Transform Advanced Care Interfaith Working Groups and Equity Task Force that brought over 120 health providers and interfaith leaders together to advocate for the advanced care of the poor. Dr. Pitts was a member of the Central Committee of the World Council of Churches headquartered in Geneva, Switzerland. Dr. Pitts is the former chair of the board of directors of Morehouse School of Religion, New Hope, I mean the New Baptist Covenant founded by President Jimmy Carter and the Baptist Joint Committee in Washington, D.C. Dr. Pitts served as director of racial justice for the Division of Church and Society and the Prophetic Justice Unit of the National Council of Churches in the, United, in the USA, in New York. Dr. Pitts served as Executive Director of Mutual Assistance Team Endeavor, MATE, in Los Angeles, California from 1973 to 1978. He received his bachelor degree from Virginia State College. He attended Virginia Union Theological Seminary and Crozier Divinity School of in Rochester, New York, where he received his Master of Divinity, Master of, Div Master of Divinity degree. Dr. Pitts continued his studies in ecumenical formation at Union Theological Seminary in New York in the Master's Sacred Theology program. Dr. Pitts later received a Doctor of Ministry degree in church management from United Theological Seminary in Dayton, Ohio. He served on the board of SCLC in Los Angeles, California, and chair the board of Higher Horizons Daycare Center in Bailey, Crossroads, Virginia. He's married to Dr. Shirley Wong Pitts. They have two children and five grandchildren. He accompanied his wife, a full, he, <coughs> Dr. Pitts accompanied his wife, Shirley, a Fulbright scholar to Brexit University in Palestine, where they lived in the West Bank of Palestine under the apartheid regime. As I said, he is a dear friend. I think we, we went out to, to, to lunch yesterday and we ended up talking over three or four hours. The trip kept passing, wanting us to leave. But uh, <laughs> uh, he is retired now. He's pledged to help us. So he'll be a, he'll be a regular, regular site as a consultant and a help. He's already connected me to a lot of people in D.C. that I need to talk to on yesterday during our lunch. He's, a, he's something, y'all. He's a powerful, powerful man in this country. And uh, it's very, uh, you know, I was thinking when we were talking yesterday, we, we were together and then we weren't for all those years. God put us together in that moment for this moment. put us together at that moment for this moment. So it's a pleasure 
to introduce and present to New Hope Missionary Baptist Church my friend and brother, Dr. Pitts, Tyrone Pitts. <laughs> Following the selection by the choir.
church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. To the pastor of this great church, Dr. Jeffrey, to the first lady of this church, Mrs. Jeffries, to the one who has been so gracious to me during this time by looking after me, Reverend Lakeisha Shah, the Baron Dulapian. Forgive me if I didn't get her name right, but I know that she gave me the cues, but I probably didn't pronounce it right. To Deacon Curtis Riggins, Jr., who picked me up last night in the middle of the night and was so hospitable to me. And to you, my brothers and sisters, it's indeed an honor and a privilege for me to be with you on this day. And I come to say to you, happy birthday. You may be seated. I, I'm so honored to be here today, not just to be with my friend and brother in the ministry, but to be here because of your history and because of your achievements over the years. And so that, that I just want to say thank you. As I come, I'm reminded of a story. You, you may sit down. I'm reminded of a story. What, what was read about my history was very uh, moving to me. And I was reminded of a story. It seems as though a young man was called to preach and he went to his pastor and he said, Brother Pastor, I have been called to preach. And the pastor decided to set a time for his sermon of license. This young man did such a great job that people were amazed. He had people running up and down the aisles. Some folks jumped out of the balcony. One man ran out of this church and came back after he'd been in the parking lot. This was one of the greatest times that this church had had in listening to a young minister. But right after this, this sermon, this young man disappeared from the scene. And a few la years later, the pastor saw him in a grocery store and asked him what happened. He said, Brother Pastor, you know the Lord did call me, but after he heard me, he changed his mind. So I hope you don't change your mind about me today after you've heard the wonderful words by your pastor. There is a word from the Lord that comes from two passages of scripture today. One passage you heard in the opening where Jesus went to the wilderness right after he was baptized. The other comes from the book of Kings. And it comes from Kings, the seventh chapter, from the third through the 16th verses. And I will only read from the third to the ninth. And it reads as follows. Would you stand, please? Now there were four leprous men outside of the city gate who said to one another, why should we sit here until we die? If we say, let us enter the city, the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. But if we sit here, we shall also die. Therefore, let us go to the Armenian camp. 
If they spare our lives, we shall live, and if they kill us, we shall but die. So they arose at twilight to go to the Armenian camp, but when they came to the edge of the camp, there was no one there, for the Lord had caused the Armenian army to hear the sound of chariots and of horses and the sound of a great army, so that they said to one another, King of Israel has hired against us the king of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to fight against us. So they fled in the night and abandoned their tents and their horses and their donkeys, leaving the camp just as it was. And they fled for their lives. When these leprous men had come to the edge of the camp, they went into the tent and drank and ate and carried silver and gold and clothing and went and hid them. Then they came back and entered to another tent and carried things out and hid them. Then they said to one another, we're not doing right. This is the day of good news. If we are silent and wait until the morning light, we will be found guilty. Therefore, let us go and tell the king's household. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of God's word. I'd like to speak to you from the subject this morning, the urgency of a choice, the tragedy of doing nothing, the urgency of a choice the tragedy of doing nothing. Let us pray. Lord, melt me, mold me, fill me, use me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Lord, let me decrease in order that you might increase. Let these words be your words and not mine, in order that our people may become more clear about your will and your way. Amen. The urgency of a choice, the tragedy of doing nothing. The compulsion to exercise one's freedom of choice has been in existence since the beginning of time. From the quest for knowledge in the Garden of Eden to our present day search for human fulfillment, the need for persons to exercise their freedom to choose is one of the most basic instincts of human survival. History bears witness to the fact that something peculiar happens when the intricate and calculating rivers of choice interlock with the fortuitous winds of happenstance. Often despite the dark and gloomy night of happenstance and sometimes because of it, the amber dawn of choice allows human beings to rise out of the depths of the darkest moments in history and give new life and new possibilities to the struggle for freedom and justice. It was the dark and gloomy night of happenstance that brought our forefathers and foremothers to the shores of this country as slaves over 400 years ago. But it was by choice that they decided to dig deep into their collective memories and recall that they were kings and queens in their native land. Happenstance placed them in physical shackles and psychological shackles on their minds. Choice whispered songs of freedom in their hearts and souls. So much so that they were compelled to lift their voices with renewed faith and sing, Oh freedom, oh freedom over me and before I'd be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. Happenstance placed them in abject poverty. Choice gave them the ability to sing, I got shoes, you got shoes. 
All God's children got shoes. When we get to heaven, we're going to put on our shoes and walk all over God's heaven. When happenstance place them as lost souls amidst the turbulent seas of death and destruction. Choice gave them the will to sing amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. When happenstance placed them on the auction blocks. Behind the master's whips, in the master's fields, on the hangman's tree. Choice provided with them with the audacity to look beyond their pain and suffering and lift their voices in a new hope and sing with determination at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart roll away. It was there by faith that I received my sight and now I'm happy all the day. New hope because our forefathers and foremothers understood the tragedy of doing nothing. They lived their lives with intensities, working hard to provide for their children and their children's children, trying to make sure that their children would not suffer like they suffered. Often, the less they had, the more they gave. The more difficult the task, the harder they worked, they rarely complained, but always took the burdens of their struggle to Jesus. As they climbed up the rough side of the mountains of slavery and segregation, sometimes seeing no way out of their predicament, they took it to Jesus. When times were hard and budgets were low, they took it to Jesus. When the uncontrollable wings of death seemed to overshadow life, they took it to Jesus. When confronted with situations that they could not control, when their world around them seemed to crumble, they took it to Jesus. We, as American Africans, have a great legacy today, which is left to us from our foreparents. It is a legacy that teaches us that no dream is impossible, no task is too difficult if we put our faith and trust in Jesus. New Hope, our four parents recognize well the results of facing urgent choices in times of trouble. They knew that tragic circumstances often gave way to impossible possibilities. As a people of faith, they understood that there was no dichotomy between the secular and the sacred. They understood that the spirit of God, which hewed out the world from a nothingless cosmos, separated the waters from the land in the twinkling of an eye, and scooped up some flaky fibers of lifeless K, brought humanity into being. They realized that it was the same spirit that gave meaninglessness purpose, lifelessness hope, and senselessness direction. Yes, it was the same spirit that spirit of creation that held back the waters of the Red Sea, locked the jaws of lions, delivered people and nations from oppression, healed the sick, gave sight to the blind, and stood with them in their struggle against slavery. New Hope, there's always, there's always a peculiar relationship between happenstance and choice, especially when one has unshakable faith and knowing that the God who created the universe is standing with you, turning your crisis into opportunity and your predicament into God's expression of love for humanity. That's why, that's why our foreparents could say with confidence in the middle of adversity, I know he's real, for he's real in my soul. Or when they were confronted with situations where there seemed to be no way out, they would whisper with unshakable confidence, I know that trouble don't last always. Yes, New Hope, our foreparents and those great souls of our biblical history remind us that one of the great paradoxes of life is that the exercise of the freedom of choice is not truly free. One cannot choose any possibility that one desires because all choices, 
all choices carry enormous responsibility. No choice. No choice is mutually exclusive. All choices have a direct relationship with other choices. Wherever there is an action, there is a direct reaction. Sometimes, sometimes the right choice seems absurd or ridiculous or even foolishly dangerous. But the difference between a right choice and a wrong choice is not found in its absurdity, foolishness, or danger. It's found in and grounded in faith. When God confronts persons in the human predicament, it is faith that make our choices make sense. Without faith, our choices are often limited to what is easiest. Faith gives us the vision to look beyond the mundane to the profound. Faith enables potentially selfish choices to be sacrificial. Faith enables us to make responsible choices, even in an irresponsible environment. Faith creates in us the sensibilities to experience hope when there is no hope. Love in spite of hate. It gives us the courage to fight, even though there is no promise of victory. In our Old Testament lesson, which I read for you this morning, we come face to face with the difficulty of exercising one's freedom of choice when one is locked out of mainstream society. These lepers were not outside of the city gate because they wanted to be there. They were there because they were outcasts, rejected stones of their society who had a horrible skin condition called leprosy. Even if they went into the city, they were not welcome. As they sat at the gate of the city before the scorching sun, they all recognized the seriousness of their situation and concluded that they had to make an urgent choice lest they die. So they carefully considered their options. I can imagine that in the midst of the conversation that God gave insight to one of these leopards who persuaded the others that all was not lost. And so these leopards decided to venture out into unfamiliar territory, believing in the collective wisdom that was stored in the memory banks of the Hebrew people that God would make a way somehow. When they found that the Syrians had gone, they filled themselves with the Syrians' food and took some of the wealth and hid it. Then they indulged themselves and plundered the tents. Then they remembered that there were those in the city that were starving. I'm sure New Hope that they remembered how they were treated by those in the city. I'm sure that they remembered how they were sped upon and cursed and driven from their homes and rejected by those in the city. Yet the scripture says, the scripture says that they said to one another, we are not doing right. This is the day of good news. If we are keeping silent, if we wait until the morning light, punishment will overtake us. So now let us go and tell the king's household. In the New Testament lesson that you heard this morning, the Gospel of Luke, immediately after his baptism, Jesus decided to take time for praying and fasting before he began his ministry. Jesus goes to the wilderness to commune with God and to also do strategic planning and reflection. Each time Jesus chooses the higher ground of spiritual power when he confronts Satan and Satan tries to get him to look at his own self and to make sure that he deals with issues from profit, greed, and self-satisfaction. But Jesus says, no, I am listening to God and I'm following the Holy Spirit. These two passages of scripture, my brothers and sisters, highlights the difficulty that we as American African Christians face today as we suffer from spiritual anemia. An American society that is trapped behind the walls of white nationalism, being overwhelmed by the famine of forgetfulness, surrounded by the seas of personal greed, self-profit, and self-destruction is all upon us. Just as there was a famine in Samaria, there's a moral and spiritual famine in America today. Because we as a nation fail to remain faithful to the founding principles of the Declaration of Independence, our Constitution, and our commitment to Jesus Christ and his ministry. Famine 
that is starving our will and allowing us not to be a loving and communi community of justice, love, mercy, and to walk humbly with God. A famine of greed, profit, militarism, racism, and rugged individualism that, have been, that has been absorbed by the mega, the Make America Great Movement, and the rise of xenophobia, anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, and nationalism that has been the focus of remaking America for over two decades. Today, New Hope, as in no other time in our history, we as American Africans are faced with the urgency of a choice. No other single group of people in this nation are faced with greater challenges than the American African community. For us as a people, this challenge is not new. We have been here before, but somehow, my brothers and sisters, this feels different. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. reminded us 56 years ago that, quote, a nation that continues year after year to spend more money on military defense than programs of social uplift is approaching spiritual death. He also reminded us that we as a nation must undergo a radical revolution of values. We must rapidly begin to shift from a thing-oriented society to a personal-oriented society. So I came here today, New Hope, on your 74th birthday, in the spirit of Dr. Martin Luther King, to remind you that despite what we see with our eyes and feel in our hearts that there is still new hope for our nation and for our world if we engage in a radical change in America. Today, we as a people must struggle harder than ever to change the course of America and recommit ourselves to struggle for justice lest we die. We must engage in the present day struggle of the Palestinian people in Gaza in the West Bank, whose skin color separates them from those in power who have a similar history of American Africans and indigenous people living in America and who have lived in, under Israeli op, op, uh, apartheid in an open air prison for over 76 years. Today, my brothers and sisters, we witness daily on our TV screens, our social media, our internet, international news, our iPhone apps, the genocidal war in Gaza where Israelis have killed over 30,000 men, women, and children and wounded over 70,000 people in the last five months. We have witnessed in real time Palestinian babies starving, women having babies without medical support, bombs that destroy hundreds of hospitals, churches, mosques, and schools paid for by U.S. dollars in the name of peace and security for Israel, while our president and congressional leaders refuse to call for a ceasefire. That's something wrong in America today. Like the lepers in our story lesson this morning, Palestinians, both Christians and Muslims, are outside of the city gates and treated as outsiders and are in real time being driven from the Holy Land through ethnic cleansing. Oh, my brothers and sisters, there is a famine in America today, especially when conservative politicians are trying to turn the clock back on progress for racial and ethnic poor people in America and where they attempt to destroy voting rights, women's rights, disfranchise, disfranchise those who fight for justice and opportunity. There's a famine in America today. We are confronted with climate change that's destroying us while climate deniers profit from climate change. Killing of in, and incarceration of refugees who try to come into our nation from the south who are being killed and destroyed. Yes, my brothers and sisters, like our parents before us, we must call on the Holy Spirit to engage with us to make sure that we deal with the issues that are before us today. For my brothers and sisters, like the people in our scripture, an overwhelming majority of American Africans reside outside of the gates of the city being scorched by the hot sun 
of defeat and hopelessness. Like the lepers in our scripture, we're not sitting outside of the gates of the city because we are intellectually inferior, socially unacceptable, or inherently lazy. Or our history as an African people in the U.S. bears witness to the fact that some of the best minds in this great nation of ours, of ours are of African American descent. No, we are not by nature a lazy people. Our problem is not the avoidance of hard work. It is the absence of a decent wage. We have always struggled twice as hard as most other people in this nation because we have known that to make it in this society, we have to jump higher, run faster, swim further, and stay awake longer than everybody else. No, we are not a lazy people. We are proud people who have a rich history, who are willing to make tremendous sacrifices to make this world a better place to live. Like our four parents before us, we must venture out by faith, led by the Holy Spirit, to build a new sense of pride in ourselves as a people. We must build an economic base that will allow us to control our own destiny, an economic base that takes advantage of the fact that we now own $2 trillion in wealth, and we have over 8, 8 million billionaires in this nation. And as African Christians, we must work together and follow up on the legacy of our foreparents. We must not allow ourselves new hope to sink into the quicksand of apathy or the deep waters of doing nothing. We must struggle to climb the rough side of the mountain just as our forefathers and foremothers struggled. We must struggle to climb the mountain with the same enthusiasm, courage, and tenacity that they had. For the climbing shoes that they wore have now been passed down to us. I don't want you to worry this morning, New Hope, about their appearance, for they're still sufficient for the climb. Even though the shoals, soles may appear to be a bit worn and tattered, there's still enough tread on them for the climb. Even though the shoestrings may be dry riding from weathering the storms of life, they're still strong enough for the climb. Even though the shoe heels may be coming apart from, the stu from stumbling on the rugged edges of the rocks of life, don't worry about them because they're still strong enough for the climb. Even though the shoe heels look a little bit dull and scuffed from the wear and tear of the struggle, don't pay that any mind, for they are still strong enough for the climb. For these climbing shoes are special shoes. Ordinary shoes would have been worn to spats by now, but these shoes still have good arches that keep our flat feet braced for the climb. These shoes may look bad and they may even smell bad, but once you put them on, you will understand how important they are for the climb. I know that they don't look like it, but these shoes are the most valuable shoes you can buy for the climb, for they have been purchased with something more precious than silver and gold. They have been purchased with the suffering, blood, sweat, and tears of our mothers and fathers and our sisters and brothers who started this climb up the rough side of the mountain in past generations. I know some of you would like to have a new pair of glossy, shiny shoes so you can style and look good as you climb up this left rough side of the mountain. If you want to look good at, at climb, and when you climb, you go right ahead. I'm not interested in looking good. I'm only interested in getting to the top of the mountain. So you see, if my climbing shoes don't look good, I won't despair because they're in great climbing condition. They have been tested by the trials and tribulations of time. They have been weatherproof by the sweat and blood of those who have gone on before. You see, if I know that if I want to make them look better, all I have to do is stop when I get weary and tired and discuss the condition of my shoes with a master shoe repairman. You see, there's a master shoe repairman, a master shoe repairman who knows all about shoes. He's a specialist who can just look at your shoes and he'll know the trials and tribulations that you had to overcome 
while climbing up the rough side of the mountain. He'll know how difficult the road was you have to travel by just looking at your shoes. So when I'm tired and weary from traveling, I will just sit on the side of the road and tell him about the problems that I'm having climbing up the rough side of the mountain. New Hope, you don't have to shout. All you have to do is whisper softly about your worn soles and dry riding springs. Whisper softly and tell him that your shoe heels are falling apart and of the dull, scuffed appearance of the leather of your shoe. Whisper softly and tell him about the difficulty of climbing up the rough side of the mountain with battered, tattered, worn, torn, and raggedy shoes. If you tell him that sometimes you think you need a new pair of shoes because you have your doubts as to whether these shoes will make it up the rough side of the mountain. He'll remind you that your shoes, your shoes are special shoes. They are the same shoes that were worn by your grandmother and your grandfather and your great-grandmother and your great-grandfather who started this climb up the rough side of the mountain. He'll remind you that your shoes have walked a long history of prayer, praise, and thanksgiving. He'll remind you that your shoes have already come through many dangers, toils, and snares, and that they have brought you safe thus far, and that they will lead you home. He'll remind you that your shoes are special shoes, and if your shoes are like my shoes, church, the shoe repairman will tell you to take off your shoes, and immediately he will begin to work on your shoes. And with the tools of his trade, he will take the old worn out soles of despair and replace them with new soles of hope. He will take the dry riding strings of forgetfulness and replace them with new strings of renewed vision. He will take the dull and scuffed leather of apathy and polish it with the glossy coat of renewed struggle. Then this master shoe repairman will tell you to put on your reconditioned shoes for they are ready for you to continue your climb up the rough side of the mountain. And if your shoes are anything like my shoes, we will ha you will have a new bounce in your step as you start up the rough side of the mountain. And when you look at your feet, they'll look new. And when you look at your hands, they will too. And as you start up the rough side of the mountain, you won't worry anymore about getting to the top because you know that the old master shoe repairman was Jesus. Jesus, the King of Kings. Jesus, Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Jesus, the Rose of Sharon. Jesus, the sacrificial lamb with all power at his command. Jesus, the Savior of the world. Jesus, who was buried in a bowel tomb without fanfare or celebration, but who got up after three days of being in the bowels of the earth with all power in his hand. Jesus, the giver of life and conqueror of death. Jesus, the one who opens up doors that will not be shut. I don't know about you, New Hope. This is your 74th birthday. And I just want you to know that because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all our fear is gone. Because he lives, I know that we can choose life. Yes, New Hope. Happy birthday. He lives. He lives. He lives. Do you know that he lives? He lives. He lives. He lives. Hallelujah. 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 As we stand for altar call, as we stand for our morning altar call. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Dr. Pitts. How many of you know he lives this morning? Hallelujah. We're going to extend the altar call now. Those of you who would like to come to the altar for prayer, 
We invite you to come at this time. And if you don't have a church home, we invite you to come. If you want to be a part of this congregation on our 74th anniversary, we invite you to come. Wherever you are in the sanctuary, will you come for prayer now? You come for prayer. Wherever you are. Reverend Anisha DeBartolayden is going to anoint each of you. this far by faith. We've come this far by faith. Leaning on the Lord. Trusting in his hope. He never failed. Come this far by faith. You hope leaning, leaning on the Lord, trusting in His own, His holy word. He never. Somebody say, oh, 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 hey, turn around. We come this far, my faith. We come this far.
Turn to somebody and say, thank you. Thank you for the good times. Thank you for the bad times. Thank you for the mountains. Thank you for the valleys. Thank you, Jesus. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. You brought us brought us mighty long ways. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you we're here today clothed and in our right mind. thank you for being here this morning and thank you for thank you Dr. Pitts for a great message powerful message thank you I look forward to I look forward to picking your brain the rest of the day so I hope you're not tired <laughs> we'll be going uh, be with you all day today we thank God for him Dr. Pitts we thank God for you New Hope this has been a great, great Sunday service and great morning service. And thank you. Thank you for coming to your, your birthday. Thank you. for Give yourself a hand. Give yourself a hand. Now, this celebration is not over. We're doing something a little different, and I think it's, it's something we might try ongoing. We're going to have a, a, mo a, a family movie this evening at after, right after you eat we come upstairs and we want all of you as many of you who can stay for the family movie if you have grandchildren and uh, they're not doing anything you can call them up and tell them to come on up here and look at the movie it's inside out it's about it's about emotions and how you control your emotions and it's good for families to look at it together 
So we'll come back up and we'll uh, show the movie after dinner, after you eat dinner. And we have a great dinner prepared for you. Uh, Sister Piola Johnson has done her thing with her, her pie and her food. And so we're just gonna continue to celebrate together as we leave here. We'll go downstairs and we'll all eat together as a family, amen? As a family and those of you who, who want to stay for the movie, come on back up. And make sure if you have grandchildren and children with you that you come back up, let them see this movie. God bless you. Happy birthday once again, New Hope. We, we thank you for being here. Right now I'm gonna ask Dr. Pitts to come back up and uh, give us our benediction. As he comes, I wanna thank our assistant pastor, Sister Lanisha DeBartolavin for all the hard work and all of the committee people who work to pull this together. Thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Curtis Jr who was up at 12, 12 o'clock on Friday night going out to the airport, and he probably didn't get home till around 2, maybe even later. Thank you, Curtis. Thank you, Curtis. And now unto the Lord our God, who is able to bless us, who is able to keep us, who's able to look out for us and who's able to lift us, give us hope, and help us to be servants of God's kingdom. We ask, O oh God, that you would be with each and every one of us as we leave this place, and that you will grant each and every one of us the fellowship of love and justice as we move from this place and go to our places and until we meet again in the name of the Lord who loves us Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior let the church say amen mm -hmm.